about signing day and, and uh, you know, being able to get our guys committed and signed and sealed and delivered here in December, uh, you know, headed into uh, January and, and uh, 2020. So excited about that. Uh, the first young man I'm going to talk about is Karan Coleman, offensive lineman from St. Louis, Missouri, from Pattonville High School uh, by way of Coffeeville, uh, 6'3", 300. Um, you know, big physical O lineman. We're excited about him. Uh, have an opportunity to be impactful as soon as he gets on campus. Uh, great kid. We had him on campus. Uh, love his intensity. Uh, you know, love his passion. Uh, love his direction of where he wants to go in the future, and, and Magnus being part of that. So really excited about Karan Coleman. Uh, the next one is Luke Howard, uh, tight end, six four two twenty, Lafayette, Louisiana, St. Thomas More, uh, four point O kid. Uh, he's the first commitment of our class, state champion, uh, and, and a young man that is continuous of uh, our STM connection pipeline that we've had at Magnese. Some really good football players. So excited about Luke uh, and his future here at Magnese. Uh, the next young man is Mason Kinsey, defensive man, 6'2", 230, out of Mansfield, Texas, Mansfield Legacy, uh, by way of Navarro College, and also the Citadel. Uh, was a true freshman All-American at the Citadel. Uh, he's an athletic kid, can play multiple positions for us, uh, long rangy speed, uh, being able to play with his hand in the dirt and also stand up and make plays. So we're excited about him and what he'll add to the, the, uh, the front seven. The next young man is Grayson Mays, defensive end, 6'2", 240, Belleville, Texas, uh, four-time academic all-state, uh, athletic, uh, great culture kid, excited about his leadership, his character, uh, as well as his uh, athletic ability. He's a two-time All-District MVP uh, as a junior and senior with a first-team All-State DN and a second-team All-State DN on the AP team as a junior. So a kid uh, that's played a lot of football, uh, that, that carries himself great, uh, leader, and uh, excited about Grayson. The next one is Brendan Searles, receiver 6'2", 185 out of Arlington, Texas, Mansfield Summit. Uh, long, rangy, athletic kid. We had him in camp, got him a, obviously a great evaluation on him. Uh, excited about him and where he'll be able to play. Uh, he's a young man that can play both inside and outside for us in what we do offensively, but can run, uh, stretch the field, uh, great ball skills, uh, and a great catch rating. So really excited about Brennan. Uh, Rich Tejada, DB 5'10", 170 out of Frisco, Texas, out of Frisco Centennial High School. Uh, first team all district at both corner and wide receiver. Dynamic kid. Uh, with the ball in his hand and defending, keeping the ball out of other people's hands. Dynamic returner as well. Uh, he has true speed. Uh, so we're excited about Ridge and, and what he will be able to bring to us. He comes from great bloodlines. Uh, he's got a brother played at TCU and also at Baylor. Uh, so really excited about Ridge and what he's going to be able to bring to our football team uh, and just the impact that he'll have early at McNeese. Um, the last one that we just got is Tyler Patrick, 6'4", 300 out of Wamego, Kansas, by way of Butler. Uh, just got done playing the Midwest Classic Bowl. They were 10 and three this year. Uh, a big offensive lineman that'll be able to be, you know, come in and be impactful immediately uh, to help us up front. Uh, so really excited about Tyler and uh, what he brings to the football program. Uh, you know, the thing about all seven of these guys that, that we really love is, is one uh, special thing is all these guys are multi-sport athletes in high school. Uh, being from basketball to baseball to track to wrestling. Um, and it's something that, you know, we, we put a lot of emphasis on. And it's a big part of recruiting to us uh, and being able to go recruit kids, uh, you know, for multiple reasons. I love the aspect of it that these kids, you know, stay competitive uh, year round. They're competing from August all the way, all the way through May uh, when they do that. And obviously the eligibility factor of it as well. Uh, you know, they're held to a standard um, uh, to be an academic eligible and, and, you know, they're able to maintain and do that. So. You know, there's multiple reasons we love the multi-sport athlete, and those are two main ones. Uh, you know, so we're excited about this year's class. Uh, like I said, these guys, we've had a chance to evaluate, to, to get in and get to know their families, get to know their high school coaches, uh, and, and all that were involved in their process. So really excited about today. Uh, really puts a, 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 a brick in there for us as far as recruiting going into January and February. You know, so we're excited about these guys that we got signed, sealed, and delivered today. And then we're excited about the opportunity for January, February to go back out and complete our class for 2020. Uh, so I'll take any questions. Well, Coach, two JUCO offensive linemen, uh, was that the plan knowing that, or, and, and also a JUCO kind of defensive lineman, pass rusher, 
knowing that you lost a lot in the trenches, was that the plan to go JUCO to kind of fill some of those ex spots with experience? You know, if the opportunity and, the, and it was the right fit, you know, and that's what we found in Tyler and, and, uh, and Karan, uh, and then with Mason, it's just, you know, we knew, you know, we lost two starters up front, uh, so we knew we had an opportunity to replace. We feel really good about the continuation of our depth that we've got started here at Magnese. So uh, the thing about these guys, we know these guys got an opportunity to come in and instantly be impactful. So. We're excited to get these guys on campus. Uh, you know, they're, they're excited about exactly what we got going on at Magnesia, the direction we've got, the tradition that's been here, uh, and what we just did on the field this past fall. So, you know, really excited about all three of those kids, the junior college kids. Uh, you know, really appreciate, um, you know, Levero and, and Butler and, and Coffeeville for uh, their assistance in, in making sure they landed at Magnesia. Coach, a couple weeks ago, you, you told me that you, the thought was to sign one or two per position because of the class leaving and the age, is that still achievable? Is yes. that still the goal? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you got you got seven guys right here and then you gotta, you know, we'll, we'll go out and finish the class, you know, come January, February and sign those guys uh, and, and just go back. And that's what we're looking at. Basically, we're gonna sign one or more of these positions, uh, you know, and, and so we, we, you know, accomplished some of that right here with this December signing. So we feel really good about today. We feel really good about these young men in our program uh, they're pitting me of what we're looking for um, and what you know what we've been able to go out and evaluate and create relationships with uh, and continue to grow our program at Magnesia. If your program is going to do it a little differently, are you, are you comfortable with this number? Did you want a bit more front-loaded or how do you work that from the early signing to January and February? Yeah, I, I like the number. I like the number. Um, I like the kids that we got. To me, that that's the uh, the number is one thing and making sure you got the right players and the right uh, commits is, a, is another. So we feel really good about these kids. That's the thing when you come away from today, you want to feel really good about them. And, uh, you know, we do for multiple different reasons. What Obviously, majority of those reasons I just named uh, in talking about these young men, but uh, we feel really good about where that number sets and where that number uh, still sets for January, February to, you know, complete the 2020 class. Uh, Coach, when you, after this, look, trying to fill out the class, will there be an emphasis on being heavy JUCO, being heavy, you know, freshman looking for transfer, like how will you do, how will you balance that, or will it be balanced? Yeah, no, there's a balance to it, and, and it, I, you know, it just becomes opportunity and making sure it, it's a fit uh, that they fit us schematically, they fit us character wise, culture wise. You know, that's a huge, at, you know, aspect of it, part of it, what we're looking at in our evaluation. Um, you know, so we really got a good idea, you know, about what we're looking for. You know, we're obviously recruiting kids and have been recruiting kids. And, and we know a lot of those guys that, that we're really close on are gonna sign in February. So, you know, we're just gonna continue our relationship. Uh, you know, we'll have those visits and everything when we get back come January, February, have the opportunity to show them Lake Charles, have the opportunity to show Magnet State University and what we can pro provide for a young man uh, going forward in his future. Are any, of the, uh, any of these kids could be able to be here in January to start school or they have to finish? Yes, we, you know, a couple of them, the, the JC guys in particular, those, those guys will start in, in uh, January and then we'll have, to, we'll have those high school guys, they'll show up in uh, June. How important is it for those JC guys? I mean, they already have a little bit of college experience, but making a step up from JUCO to Division One football obviously is a pretty big step as well. So how important is it for those guys to come in, get in the weight room and everything just to kind of get adjusted to, you know, Division One life? Yeah, I, th I think it's huge. You know, it gives an opportunity to get acclimated, uh, you know, to the university and then and then to our, you know, our football team and, and then get ingrained in our football program and with our coaches. So I think that's huge. It's really a jump start for them, uh, you know, being able to be here mid-year, uh, go through spring ball. That's another huge aspect of it. So, you know, they, they start getting the scheme and, and start getting in the weight room and go through, you know, that phase of off season with us. So, you know, I think that's huge. It's beneficial to us. I think it's beneficial to the kids. Uh, you know, which is a positive. So we're excited about those guys being able to be on campus, uh, you know, in a, in a month and uh, being able to start that process. Um, quarterback, what, what's the plan? What's the thoughts on that for filling that pipeline? Yeah, uh, you know, there's a couple different options there. Uh, you know, can be transfer guys, can be high school guys, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna take one at that spot. So uh, you know, that that'll that'll happen for us in uh, January, February. Coach, to have a guy like Mason coming in, a guy that has experience at the D1 level, did so at a high level, how, how advantageous is that to have a guy like him? Yeah, that's huge. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's the thing, being able to play at the Citadel and then playing at the Vero, I mean, he's playing against good people. 
And uh, so when, when you got experience, that's one thing you can't replicate. That's one thing you, the only way to get it is by playing. Uh, and Mason's done that, so that's huge. But you know, that's, like you said, that's advantageous for the Cowboys. Um, you know, we're excited about him, excited that, he, that he's able to step in and, uh, you know, have a chance to instantly be impactful for us uh, in that spot. Uh, Coach, obviously you can never plan on, trend, uh, you know, any kids transferring out, but do you have a recruiting strategy? Is there a strategy as far as holding scholarships for maybe kids that would want to transfer in maybe like later on in the process or how, how is that? Yeah, I mean, you always got the opportunity to, for, for that to, to hold a couple back. Uh, and again, it, it's going to be about you know making sure we got the right the right fit, uh, and that's a big deal for us. It's a big part of us, and making sure um, you know it's a fit for us at Magnese and it's a fit for the student athletes. So um, you know that, that that's a possibility to set there, especially you know with the transfers and the transfer portal, uh, the world we live in now, uh, to be able to hold you know hold some back uh, you know for that opportunity. So you, the phrase you you use several times the right fit and the right player. Right, good numbers, but you got to have the right commit. Talk a little bit about the the process right now in this day and age we live in, in evaluating the player first, but the difficulty in evaluating the person that goes along with the player. Yeah, and the first word is going to come to mind is relationship. You know, and, and as myself as the head coach and our coaches, assistant coaches, you know, their their feet are on the ground doing the recruiting process. And what you got to do is is you got to reach out and you got to know, you got to ask those questions, you got to have a relationship with high school coaches. Uh, ask people in the building, talk about the school building, uh, ask people that are connected to the family. So, you know, there's a lot of data and information that needs to be gathered, you know, before you just go make a decision uh, when you're talking about fit and, and just talking about a high character kid uh, and, and making sure that they're doing the right things, that they've done the right thing at their high school, you know, that they represented their high school football program, they've represented their family well, uh, and, and that we really know that's a high probability they're going to come to Magnese and represent, you know, Magnese well. Uh, in the process, so you know it's about re relationships. It's about evaluation and, uh, and and going in and making sure you're asking the questions uh, and that we're getting the correct answers and good answers. Uh, you know because you're making an investment. Uh, you know we're investing in them and their investment in us. Um, and, and you, you know anybody that's going to do that is going to make sure and do their homework. And that's something we're going to do is a uh, you know in the process of, of signing these young you know these these student athletes. So. Um, you know, we have a high standard of that, uh, of making sure it's the right fit, um, and they know and understand what the standard is, what the expectation is when you when you come to Magnese, uh, you know, in the direction of our football program, what our core values are, what our standards are, um, and you know what we can provide to you uh, for four years that'll give you set you up for success for the next four years. Uh, Coach, just something looking at when I, you know, just keeping up with the recruiting, like. The best I've been able to, I know you have a full board that I don't have, but just something that I've noticed is that I didn't see any uh, like local kids offered. And like I said, I don't know if you have or not, but uh, I just want to ask, is that just kind of a product of just maybe not enough quality in the area or what Like what went into that? Yeah, I mean, just it, it's, you know, our recruiting uh, is always going to start in the state of Louisiana. And, uh, and then, we, then we'll branch out as we have. Um, and, and the thing is, you know, we, we've got a criteria we're looking for, um, and we're constantly doing that. Um, and you know, we're, we're we're constantly looking and recruiting, and, and you know, seeing what's you know local to, to statewide to regionally wide, uh, as we as we skip over into Texas as well. So, um, you know, it, it just comes down to making sure we got the the correct player uh, that fits our program, and. and you know, a guy that that's a really talented player, and you know, sometimes that's within 15 miles. Sometimes that's within 150 miles, uh, and, and that that can just differ. Uh, you know, but our job is just to go out and, and put ourselves and our assistant coaches uh, in the position to go out and evaluate and see and, and find the best talent uh, that we can bring to Magnese. Uh, you know, and, and um, you know that that's what we've done. Coach, you have four of your six on this early signing sheet that was passed out. From Texas, was Texas your target state for these early signings? No, uh, again, we, it, it all starts in the state of Louisiana, and um, and then we branch back out to, to Texas. Um, you know, we, we we don't we don't set out and divide the states like that. Uh, you know, what we're looking for is the is the the best players. You know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not cornered us in on on uh, you know where they have to come from. We, you know, we want we want the best players, and uh, that's what we're out. That's why it's called recruiting. 
You know, that's why we're on the road. That's why we're on planes. That's why we're out looking. Uh, is to find those top guys that we can get into Magnese and want to be a part of Magnese. And, uh, you know, that's the things that we have done. And, and you know, we have a board. We have a way that we identify kids. Um, and, you know, we're excited. We're excited about we got Louisiana kids and we're excited about, you know, we got Texas kids. You know, we got a good mix of them. And, you know, that's the one thing that makes us unique at Magnese, uh, you know, really throughout the conference is, you know, where we set, you know, uh, location wise. Um, you know, gives us an opportunity to be really competitive, not only in the state of Louisiana, but in Texas as well. And, uh, you know, that's something that's uh, been here in the tradition, as you see all those numbers up there with conference championships uh, at Magnese. Uh, a lot of really good football players that came from multiple different states. So this is something we'll continue to do. Coach, quick follow up to that earlier question about the person you play. Um, you've been doing this a long time with a lot of different programs. Is there something, can you shed a little light something specific that you may look for, you in particular will look for either in person while they're playing, while the player is in action and or tape that gives you better insight into the person, maybe being how the other players react to him and how he leads the other player. Is yeah. there something that tips you off that, that may not be so relevant to to uh, you know other folks that are not in the business? Anymore? Yeah, the, you know, the observation, the evaluation part of it, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different things, you know, uh, if you're just going to name a couple of deals, I mean, you're looking for some of those intangible things. I think you named some of those, um, you know, just watching a young man, you're at a, you're at a game or you're at, at spring practice or you're at a camp, you know, the whole time I'm there, I'm, I'm watching this young man I'm watching his interaction with his teammates. I'm seeing how he operates. I'm seeing how he leads. I'm seeing the passion he plays with on the field. I'm seeing if he's competitive, you know, the entire practice or if he's competitive the entire game. Does he play hard the whole game? Uh, does he take plays off? Is he playing against the best player on the other team? Uh, what's the score of the game? What quarter are we in? Who is he playing against? So there's a lot of factors that go into when you're evaluating, uh, especially live and then the opportunity to see a young man on tape or in person at camp. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of that. Uh, and it goes back, you, you got you to gotta go back and really evaluate and you got to dissect it uh, and just see, uh, you know, and, and trust your training. You got to trust your eyes uh, for what you're seeing as a recruiter. Um, and, and you got to go, you know, got to go get the facts. And, and um, you know, those are, those are just a few things off the top of my head. Uh, think about an evaluation process that happened fast. Wow. Well, all right, Coach. Appreciate it.